let's let's go into this because I think this is far more interesting uh, than um, anything about like just reacting to Roy retiring. Who gets that job? Because that's one yeah. of the top. If it's not the best job in college basketball, it's well, one of the best five, jobs probably. in college basketball. Yeah, yeah, I mean, however you want to play it, you could say Kentucky, you could say Kansas, you can say Carolina. I, I think it's probably one of those three. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 thing here, you got Bubba Cunningham, an AD who's not a part of the family, who, who's going to be heavily involved in the in the hiring. Obviously, you're going to consult with Roy Williams here. It's his program uh, and has been, you know, with with the late Dean Smith, uh, you know, for the last 30 or so, 40 years. So I, I think ultimately you're going to try to look in the family first if you can. Now there aren't a lot of uh, incredibly accomplished guys at the highest level that are in the family. You know, you've got a couple of assistants that could be in the equation, one being Hubert Davis, who played there, who starred there, uh, who's on the staff now. Um, you know, could they go with him? Sure. Absolutely, they could go with Hubert Davis, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, I'm not sure it's the right call, uh, but he's in the mix. Wes Miller is the one that I think most people are going to have momentum for. You know, played at Carolina, grinded out, um, has been at UNC Greensboro, has taken them to a couple NCAA tournaments, including one this year. Uh, young, energetic, tough, loves Roy. I mean, absolutely. I've known Wes since he was, you know, 16, 17 years old. I mean, you will never hear him say a bad word about Roy or that program. And uh, I, I think Wes is certainly somebody that's going to be high atop their list of those that they have to consider. Because again, the lineage being part of the family is so important to Carolina, mm -hmm. probably as important to Carolina as any program in the country. Um, and again, I think you got to get the right guy because when you go the wrong way, even within the family, you saw what happened with Matt Darty. You know, I, I think you've got to be very, very careful right now to get the right guy if you're Carolina. And I would say to me, I think Wes Miller is the right guy. Yeah, Wes Miller seems like the guy that's going to get all the momentum. Um, the thought, the prevailing thought, at least from the people that I talked to, was was when it looked like this decision from Roy was a couple years away, they were waiting yeah. for West Miller to jump in something a little bit bigger because going from UNC Greensboro to UNC sure. Chapel Hill is a pretty big step up in, uh, in, in, um, in level. And I, I, look, I mean, he's, if you're a great coach, you're a great coach. And I don't think it really matters what level you're at. Uh, but there very much is a difference in um, navigating the recruiting waters. If you are trying to bring players to a, uh, a SOCON school versus the totally. flagship program in the state of North Carolina, Nike's flagship program, and a program in the ACC that is battling every year with Duke and Kansas and Kentucky and Oregon, all these other power conference schools for players. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think it just means you have to have a certain kind of staff built out for West Miller to be able to get what he needs to get. Uh, the other name that I feel like is in the family that, that probably makes the most sense at this point is Jared Haas. But Based off of the way that Stanford seasons have gone in recent years, when they've had a certain level of expectation, uh, I don't know if Jared Haas can get it at this point. You know, like there's, I yeah. get it. He's done a, he's done a good job, um, a, a decent enough job at Stanford. But it's also like when you had the the players that he had this season and last season, I think you would have expected a little bit more than what Stanford was actually able to accomplish on the court. So we'll see there. Hubert Davis is another name that I keep hearing. I wonder though. Like, is, is it a guarantee that they are going to stay in the family with this? That they are going to stay with somebody well, no, from Carolina? Be, with Bubba Cunningham being the head, uh, the AD, it's not a guarantee. But again, Carolina is different. They're different. All those former players are going to want them to stay in the family. There's going to be a lot of pressure to Bubba Cunningham to make sure he keeps it in the family. This isn't mm -hmm. telling you. This is just a different deal than so many programs. Like, at Arizona, if something happens to Sean Miller, there'll be pressure, but not at the same level there is at Carolina. All these guys go back every single year. So, yeah, you can make a run at Brad Stevens like Indiana did. And obviously, Carolina is a much better program than Indiana. Indiana fans don't want to hear that, but it's true. Um, again, Carolina is a top three program in the country. Um, Tony Bennett, yeah, you make a run at Tony Bennett. Why not, right? See if he – but I think, I think they're going to start with Carolina guys and say, 
do we have a guy here that, that can do this thing at the highest level? Do we have a guy we like? And then if they feel like, okay, you know what? Wes Miller isn't ready. Then maybe they look at some of those other guys. But I think they start with the family at this point and figure out Hubert Davis, Wes Miller, Ned Haas, maybe even a Steve Robinson. You know, do you look at, um, you know, King Rice? He hasn't done enough lately. He had Monmouth going a little bit there for a minute. Um, you know, Jerry Stackhouse, I'm sure, will try his best, but um, I don't think that's going to happen. Larry Brown will probably try, but he's 80 years old, so that would be <laughs> ridiculous, and he's put everybody on probation. So I don't know why you'd even – you know, Larry Brown probably – if the right guy gets it, do they bring on Larry Brown in a Fab Mata-esque role as a consultant? Maybe. Maybe. I could see that. Um, you know, personally, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have him anywhere around my program right now with him putting other programs on, on probation as much as he has. Um, right. You know, so the yeah. one, the one that's actually kind of interesting to me, um, which you're not going to want to hear is Jerry Stackhouse, because I don't think, I think the issue that at least you had with, with the hire with, with Jerry Stackhouse yeah. at Vanderbilt was the staff he hired and the ability he was going to uh, going to have to get talent right. to Vanderbilt. Well, if you're Jerry Stackhouse at North Carolina, I don't think that you're going to have an issue getting talent there. And if you go back and you watch some of the stuff that he ran at Vanderbilt and, and some of the, the X's and O's and the actual on-court coaching stuff that he was able to do, I thought that he was he's pretty good. Like he's he's really good at that at, at that part of the game. So that one is would be something that is actually really interesting to me. Um and, and Jerry Stackhouse going to North Carolina. I don't know if based off of the seasons that he's had at Vanderbilt, he can actually get it. You know, does, yeah. does that make sense? Like, if you're not having success at Vanderbilt, it doesn't exactly make me think that um, you're guaranteed for success uh, right. at North Carolina. Uh, but I do think that it's something that would be interesting, and I can talk myself into the idea that that's a that's a path and and um, and a plan that could end up working long term. Who would you hire if if you hire if if for Bubba Cunningham? Who are you hiring? It's tough. Um, I think. I don't know. It's all, I, I honestly don't know right now. Um, I would have to I'm going give it more. Miller. I'm yeah, going I West think, Miller. Yeah. I, I think just, at the end of the I've day. Known Wes, I've known Wes so long. I know how he's built. I know what type of person he is. He's got some fight to him because he, he had to grind it out to get it to where he was, obviously playing at Carolina. Uh, he, he was the interim coach at UNC Greensboro when, when Mike DeMent left and got that job and has done a great job there. Uh, he had a chance to get Charleston and didn't. Um, he withdrew from that job, from what I'm told. So to me, I think Wes Miller is the no-brainer here. He's young. He's energetic. He knows the, the, the landscape. He goes back all the time. Um, he knows the area. Obviously, he doesn't know. Yeah, he hasn't recruited at the highest level, but he knows the people, the AU coaches in the area. Um, they know him. He'll hire the right staff because, again, More he's very entrenched in college basketball. So, I, yeah, I just think Wes Miller is the right guy. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, but I, what I would say is this. I would want to bring in Hubert. I would want to bring in Jerry Stackhouse and – um, maybe a couple other candidates, and I would just want the, like to, and say, here, give me the detailed plan of what you're going to do to be able to get North Carolina back to the point where it is perennially one of the top ten teams in the country. It's a great program. They haven't been one of the top ten teams in the country uh, in recent seasons. So I would I would absolutely make sure to bring those guys in for an interview and say, sell me on it. Convince me why Jerry Stackhouse. Convince me why I need to hire you as the next coach in North Carolina. Give me the entire detailed plan. Tell me who you're going to hire as a staff. Tell me how you're going to approach making sure that these kids don't transfer. Tell me how you're going to approach getting talent onto this campus. Uh, tell me how you're going to run. Are we going to keep doing the same two bigs kind of Carolina secondary break type deal? Are you going to recruit more shooters? Are you going to start trying to play a little bit more of a modern style of basketball than Roy Williams is doing? That's come in. Sell me on it. Try to pitch me on it. Try to try to convince me. That, I just that, don't you know, know how you hire a guy who's been uh, mediocre at best at, at Vanderbilt. And, and, no, and, I, I, I agree. I agree. But if yeah. if the issue is uh, that you just can't get players onto the campus and you can't get the, the talent that you need to be able to, to succeed at the level that you but want you're to succeed. Gonna, it's Carolina. You're going to get talent. 
That's what I'm saying, which is why, which is why the, the part of, oh, you know what, Jerry Stackhouse, yeah, he's actually a pretty good basketball coach, and and if you know you're going to get the talent in North Carolina, that's a, that's an interesting hire, and it's something where I want, to, I would want to bring him in, and and at, at, like at the very least have a, a real interview and try to see exactly what his plan would end up being. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just feel like you need somebody that's going to work too. You need somebody that's going to work hard. That would be my other thing, and 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 Wes works. He works. So like from what I've heard, Stack isn't a, a grinder by any means. Um, you know, he likes to play golf. Um, I, I think Wes would would take this one a little bit, uh, I don't know, more seriously is the right word, but but again, would would take more into. So you know, again, you got names, you got guys outside the family. I don't think those guys will be the first call. Um, from what I'm told, it'll be guys in the family and see if they can go that route. Um, but Roy Williams retires on April Fool's Day, on Rob Doster's birthday, no less. Mm-hmm. I mean, spoiling your entire birthday plans, Rob, which were to do what? I, I don't know. I don't know. But whatever it was, <laughs> now you, you've got you've to focus and be on a, a second pod with me talking about Roy Williams. And, uh, yeah, we're going to miss the, uh, all the kind of southern comments from Roy, uh, the Oshucks, um, and, and we'll miss, obviously, seeing Roy around. You know, he was always he, – he was he was fun to, to kind of talk to. He was fun to talk to because um, I, I think the one thing with Roy, he didn't really have an air of arrogance to him when you talked to him. He, he would just – you know, I, when I broke in 20 years ago, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm never going to get to know Roy Williams and Coach K and – all these guys that were already a little bit older, right? They were in like, you know, their, their mid fifties or, you know, something like that, Bayheim. And, uh, and I've actually been able to, you know, establish a pretty good relationship with Roy over the years. Uh, interviewed him plenty of times, hung out with him at, at, you know, AU events and would sit next to him and, um, and really enjoyed talking to Roy because again, I, I think there wasn't a lot of, of, of BS with Roy. 